about it to move the five-year plan. Uh, the people have spoken, and now it's time to deliver. And I'm determined on behalf of the council that we will deliver. Yeah. 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 And I would remind uh, Councillor Green if he wanted any better testament to the uh, the future of the Labour Party, I would remind him and I would ask him to reflect on what happened in rural Western constituencies. Yeah. 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 The removal of the final Conservative in uh, the only Conservative in Merseyside. Uh, people have, have spoken loudly and clearly at both local and parliamentary level. They've rejected the Tories. They've uh, given us a vote of confidence. We're determined we'll finish the job. Yeah. Yeah.
politics, taking into account the call by Age UK for homes to be built to the lifetime standard. So How's that going to be? Can I just stop you there? That's item nine. I I no, 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 no. Uh, Dave, item nine is Councillor Phil Davis's uh, question, Mr. Mayor. Councillor, oh, <laughs> 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 I'm going to carry on, Mr. Mayor. It was lodged under this aspect, referring to the carry on before. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to go through the question part, how might this scheme and other housing projects take into account the call by Age UK for homes to be built to the lifetime standard so that they can be easily adapted as people age and allow older people with different care needs to live independently for as long as possible? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any more? Housing market assessments 
which will be set out in more detail and the housing needs of different groups within the local population. However, it is likely that the Council will seek to apply the wheelchair adaptable standard as a proportion of all new housing if this can be shown to be viable. Where possible, however, as part of any partnership working with rents to the providers or private developers, partners such as Keepmon, we try to maximise standards above mandatory requirements regarding accessibility and design quality, subject to the individual site appraisals regarding viability. Willow has successfully achieved a mix of both forms and, and that are accessible for the future and more generally needs accommodation to ensure Willow is responding to the local needs and will continue to work with partners to achieve this, where possible, in line with the amazing policies to be adopted as part of the core strategy local plan. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. In terms of, in terms of Pat, uh, ethical and green uh, uh, components. Uh, yes, Pat, I will definitely put that into the uh, equation. I'll speak to the team about it. I'm not answering that.
Uh, it was a, an extremely um, complicated business, but nevertheless, I think that the result is that we now have a current service which is in no way inferior and in many ways better and smoother than we had before. Um, as for the position <coughs> of the will of residents, they will, uh, at their request, be able to have their, um, their, 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 their uh, meeting in, in Birkenhead Town Hall. So I don't think there should be any problem at all about people having to go out to Birkenhead. And I would at least I would like to take this um, opportunity to congratulate the um, <coughs> particularly the legal department of both um, authorities in 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 this area in such a small way. Yeah. On to um, Councillor Brian Kenny's question. No, that was um, a big long one. Sure. 
the bed of the past is that a man and a woman, it's usually a man and a woman, not inevitably, are able to share the time off, are provided <coughs> with the, uh, reasonable arrangements between their respective employers. So, I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Can we note that report?
they talk about attracting investment to the area. Surely this cannot be all the investment that is coming to Wirral and all that the cabinet member has to report on the Wirral's economy. Could it be a case then perhaps, you know, I, I believe you too, has he or perhaps the officers who perhaps assist him in writing these reports haven't had the time to put together a more comprehensive report? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's, uh, in relation to the Alliance and the comments that uh, the Cabinet member made in relation to the transport, given that Mersey Rail could actually, uh, could actually let's fly up to it, uh, <coughs> to what this has been, what steps will the Cabinet member make to push that as a part of the agenda? Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Springs. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Pat Kennedy, um, Activities um, as chair of the Mercedes the Alliance. Um, in particular, um, what's what's been going on in terms of the two years you've been in, in, in the chair um, to ensure further improvements are applied to the city to that same plan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in relation to the Breton Air Town Centre, um, as many of the residents in my ward are concerned about the outcome.
So it is vital to the economy on both sides of the border, and we are pursuing with a bigger anti-termination. So thank you both for those questions. Regarding uh, Pat Cleary's uh, question on Birkenhead Town Centre plan and the consultation, I mean, Neptune, as I said previously, have a track record, uh, second to none, of consulting with the public on schemes. As they have done, obviously, with the Brighton, but also previously with the schemes in Liverpool and, and also in, in, in South Wales. I do think it, it's vital uh, because obviously Birkenhead is, is the, the premier retail the location on, on the world. It has, it has a fantastic potential. We can do an awful lot more. I think um, if you've gone through Birkenhead Market lately, as I said previously, uh, it's a shadow of its former self. And without a doubt, it needs, it needs regeneration. Um, but linking up with you, you know, the Boulevard, uh, with, the, with, the, with the pool, um, um, with the pool proposals to go on the back of the station and to put more around the, um, the, the cinema, I think this is a good idea, but of course it's going to be up to the stakeholders, the businesses and, and the residents. But I can assure you that the, uh, state, uh, the stakeholder consultation uh, and exhibition surveys will start as soon as the plans are announced. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hackett, coming on to that report. Moving mm -hmm. on to Cabinet Portfolio for Highways and Transport. Any questions to Councillor Stewart? Thank you. Councillor Stewart. Yeah. 
We looked at reporting. We've been moving on to the final cabinet portfolio, children and family services. Are there any questions to Castle Tony Smith? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this report refers to targeted services and children's centres. I'd like to ask you, um, on the 24th of June, Frank Field, the LP, wrote on his blog that council offices have reported on how cuts should be made to the budget for children's centres. Um, as this hasn't yet report appeared on the Covenant agenda, when does the Covenant member envisage sharing these proposals with his Covenant colleagues, and for that matter, the rest of the council selected members? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mandy, for that uh, question. Um, I can inform the former Mandy that uh, we will be sharing that uh, it's actually going up to cabinet on the 29th of July um, and it should be on the server, I think, on the next, next 14 not next 14 days. But we will be sharing it with all cabinet, with all members of the council. Um, the first part of the question was that, um, uh, yes, I, I think that there was some discussions with the MP in that, um, but certainly not into the details of, of, of the plan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um,
to where I uh, welcome Eric uh, Robinson, the new chief exec of the First Council. <laughs>
Notice we've been given in the course with standing orders 10 to be of one question. From Councillor Gilchrist to Councillor Phil Davis. Councillor, Councillor Gilchrist, would you like to ask a few questions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. More than a decade ago, at a time of financial constraint, the Council entered into a PFI deal to modernise buildings and provide services to a number of our schools. In recent times, the charges for certain services have increased markedly, eating into school budgets to an extent that is now causing difficulties. What is the Council doing to challenge these charges? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and can I thank Councillor Gilchrist for um, notice, giving notice of this question. Um, response is as follows. In 2001, the Council entered into a nine-school PFI contract to refurbish and extend, and in two cases, rebuild schools to make them fit for purpose. Following a, a very difficult construction period, over 8,000 pupils benefit each day from the modern facilities provided. Other schools have also benefited from redirected capital investment that would otherwise have had to have been spent on the nine schools, for example, to replace 120 mobile <coughs> classrooms. PFI remains the government's core option for major school investments. The next two schools to be rebuilt on Ridgeway and Bedford Drive can only be funded as part of a regional PFI scheme. The PFI contract signed and agreed by the Council and the Schools includes a benchmarking pro uh, process regarding the cost of services, for example, catering and cleaning, at regular intervals through the contract period. The Council successfully delayed by three years the first benchmarking on the basis of the difficult and delayed construction phase, leading to savings for schools and has led to challenging discussions with the PFI provider for over a year before these first benchmark increases have been agreed. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the increases come at a difficult time for schools as the lengthy and continuing period of flat cash budgets mean an effective year on year cut when costs are factored in. For example, the increased costs of employing staff. Reductions in sixth form funding were also impacted on school budgets. The Council will continue to work with the nine schools in monitoring the contract and challenging where appropriate for the period until the next benchmarking in 2018. A piece of work is also being undertaken to compare facilities management costs in the rural PFI schools with a sample of rural non-PFI schools and it's hoped to present the outcome of this work as a discussion paper to schools for the next term. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Okay, moving on to item 10, matters referred to the policy and performance committee. The council is asked to consider the recommendations in respect of notice of motion that has been referred by the council to committees. Notice of motion consultation that counts was considered by the standards of constitutional oversight committee at its meeting on the 3rd of March 2015. Minutes 11 refers set out at page 141 to 144 of the agenda. I invite the Chair of the Standards and Constitutional Oversight Committee, Councillor Bill Davis, to move the committee's recommendation. Uh, do I have a second that? All in favour? Any engaged? Any abstentions? On then to item 11, notice of motions. Councillors are now moved to item 11 on the agenda pages of 145 to 148, and the council is invited to consider the following notices of motion which have been submitted in accordance with standard order 7, which I consider are appropriate by debating this evening. The, mo the motions to be debated are the ones relating to Northern Power House, Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. Implementation of notice of motion becoming a dementia friendly council. Councillor. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Can I move that the Rosie Sarah Fire Rescue notice of motion to be first and then after the Conservatives to be second or third? Is that 
that read? Is the commitment that the three will be debated before the before the actual? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's, that's agreed. That's that's fine. So that's moved up to the first. Uh, with regards to the other notice of motion, I decided that it's more conductive to dispatch the business that they are dealt with as follows. We will economic success be referred to the to the regeneration and environmental policy and performance committee. Proposal for fire station on Greenbelt Land in Sorgal Mass will be referred to the Regeneration and Environmental Policy and Performance Committee for Italy. Mental Health Challenge should be referred to the Families and well and Policies and Performance Committee. Moving now to the first motion to be debated, Lord of the House, may, may, I, may I have a proposal in the second meeting? <laughs> And I, I just want these to be removed and seconded. Uh, so move, Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy. Can I have a proposal in the seconder for the emergency side fire and rescue service? Sorry. Okay, that's the one to be debated. Can I help debate?
six in 2013, 14, and 10 in 2014, 15. Mr. Mayor, the, the, the Conservative amendments uh, in the name of Council Blakely, we, we will not be supporting because I believe it is a red herring. Because the truth, Mr. Mayor, is that if these cuts were reversed and Upton and West Kirby fire stations remained open, there would no, be no need to look at merger proposals, uh, which the Chief Officer himself has described as, quote, the least worst option, unquote. So, Mr. Mayor, if George Osborne really believes in rebalancing the economy and really believes in the Northern powerhouse, he has the perfect opportunity this Wednesday when he moves his budget by ordering an immediate reversal of the cuts of the fire authorities uh, grant. Our motion asks our four rural MPs to seek an urgent meeting with the appropriate minister to make this case. Mr. Mayor, I believe the first duty of any government must be to keep its citizens safe. I believe it's a national disgrace that Conservatives are prepared to sacrifice this responsibility in pursuit of this misguided ideological crusade to shrink the state. So, Mr. Mayor, by agreeing this motion tonight, Council can send a loud and clear message that the safety of the people of the world must not be compromised for narrow political objectives. I so move. Thank you. Yeah. 
on West Cable Fire Station 15 years. So, <coughs> just a bit, assuming the Chief Fire Officer is right and he needs a new station for whatever reason, why does it have to be on a precious green belt? Green belt that this council has historically defended to the hills. Mr. Mayor, it's come to light, and I thank Mr. Brace for this. There's been an ongoing string of emails between senior fire service officers, senior council officers, including senior planning officers. Therefore, it's no wonder that local people perceive that this is a done deal. And Mr. Mayor, we willing to doubt, I'm not saying there has been any deals done, and simply express a view said to me by many residents who I represent, and really say he can blame them. Mr. Mayor, one of those emails from Keelan Timmins, Deputy Chief Executive of the Minister of Fire Rescue's Council Officers, talked about sites that have been discounted and sites that have been considered in more detail. According to Mr. Timmins' email, six sites were considered in more detail. However, according to him, there are only two runners left Sorghumassi Bypass and the Lively Community Hall sites in Greenby. Now, Mr. Mayor, having had the Greenby site withdrawn by the Leader of the Council, one has to ask why the other runner, described by Mr. Timmins as owned by Royal Council and looks quite positive based on recent correspondence, was up and then returned to. Instead, a brand new site, Green Belt, <coughs> that had never been in the mix previously, where and how did council officers suddenly identify a brand new site? Mr. Mayor, this is not a case in the Minism. The site of Southern Massey Road and Bypass is still in the more western Southern Massey Ward. The site of Southern Massey Road up to Bypass, like the Greenby site, is not in Green Belt. <coughs> it is flat as uh, urban green space. And while it, while it is wooded, I have checked with council officers today there are no TPOs on any of the trees. In fact, Mr. Mayor, one senior council officer said the site would already have its own perimeter buffer with the trees that are already in situ. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, here is a council owned site that is not in green belt, that is described by Mr. Timmins as looking positive, that is only four tenths of a mile from the, the green belt site. So, Mr. Mayor, the, the chief fire officer's assertion that there are no alternative sites is incorrect. Mr. Mayor, having made council aware of this, and because of massive public opposition, I would hope that the leader of the council will dip into his vat of milk of human kindness and treat residents of Sorghum Massey <laughs> as fairly as he treated residents of Greenby, and this evening withdraw the Green Belt site of Sorghum Massey from consideration. Mr. Mayor, I am resident of Sorghum Massey, await his response when he stands to make his right reply. Mr. Mayor, I urge council to sort support the friendly amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I will now be then opening this up to a debate. Are there any speakers on the amendment? Well, briefly on the amendment, Mr. Mayor, from called. Some months ago, when this was first discussed, I said there had to be a, a fair way, a way that was agreed between members of finding a new site. I'm not aware that that process has been properly followed yet. The Council of Lakeley has found a site and there are no overriding objections to it. I don't see why that site shouldn't be put forward for consideration. I'll read other remarks about other matters. I'll deal with it before later, Mr. Mayor. Any other speakers to the amendment? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I rise to support the motion in the name of Councillor Phil Davis and to oppose the amendment. Because I think we really need to look at the big picture here. What this issue is about really is by savage cuts by a Tory government to vital public services such as fire and rescue service. And there's no doubt about it. Every statistic shows that in the north of England, where we come from, we are being singled out by this national government for savage cuts, much more so than any other part of the UK. Now, as a will council, we can't feel that that's right or justified, and we can't accept that. And quite literally, Mr Mayor, what we're debating tonight is literally a life and death issue, because there's no doubt that if these cuts continue as they are now by this Tory government, lives will be lost, wills, residents' lives will be put at risk as a direct result of decisions taken by the Tory government. 
And I think with respect to Tory amendments, and I listen very carefully to what Councillor Blake was saying, I think it missed the whole point of the seriousness of the situation where he talked about the Green Belt, etc. What we're talking about here is a situation where if this government carries on as it is now, lives will be lost. And I would suggest to the Tory group tonight that if they're serious about this whole issue, they should be using whatever influence they have with their own party, within national government, to reverse the cuts. And I think as the leaders already said in, in moving the motion, they've got a golden opportunity on Wednesday this week when George Osborne will be standing up in the House of Commons eh, and making his statement. There's an opportunity there to get the government between now and Wednesday this week to recognise the seriousness of the situation and to reverse their cuts. So this issue is not just about an argument about green belts or whether it should be built in this area or that area. We're talking literally about residents' lives and on that basis, Mr Mayor, I would urge this, com this uh, council tonight to unanimously support the motion and to reject the amendment put forward by the Conservative Group. Thank you, Mr Mayor. do not justify these cuts, Mr Mayor. Around 40,000 people were rescued by firefighters in the UK last year. Over 100 rescues a day. Firefighters still make a significant intervention of fires. Over 4,000 people are rescued annually in fires by firefighters, similar to levels a decade ago. Fires and deaths have been reduced with the active intervention of firefighters, better regulation and social changes. But, Mr Mayor, the risks are still high, including the firefighters. The UK faces increased risks and uncertainty now and in the future from terrorism, climate change, the age of population and the housing crisis, as well as other hazards and threats. And it is with all of this in mind, Mr Mayor, that I urge all members to support this motion, requesting that all Bill MPs, as a matter of urgency, raise with the appropriate a review of the grant allocation to stop these closures. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm not sure whether I need to congratulate Council Kelly for today's speech. Instead of being out there campaigning as hard as they 
stop the closure of two fire stations that claim party politics about the location of one. If that isn't getting your priorities wrong, I don't know what is. And you don't know either, because you know very well that you haven't carried the people with you on this. Mr. Mayor, the fire authority is an authority, the same as this council is an authority, the same as the police uh, authority is a, is a separate one, it's all right. And the, the, those authorities all have the responsibility. And the chief fire officer has an obligation above all others, and that is to save lives uh, and property in that order. When he seeks disclosure from the council about what land it owns, then our council officers are obliged to disclose what we own. And that was interpreted mischievously, I think, by some <coughs> council officers offering land. And there was, there was no such thing. They had no ability to offer it. The fire authority had then to seek planning permission. And even after planning permission might be given, then the council would still agree or not agree to release the land. And even that would be subject to, uh, to, to legal challenge. But in the seeming, in this uh, rather complex process, the fire chief had to be driven by one consideration above all others, and that was the response times. And he made that absolutely clear in every meeting that uh, I attended. But in the uh, rather complex uh, process, Mr. Mayor, in, in my opinion, it is to be it's utterly shameful for any party to seek to make political capital out of a matter involving risk to life. And that's what the Conservatives yeah. are doing over there when they should be out campaigning to save both of the fire stations, not about where the one that replaces them because of their government is going to be located. Mr. Mayor, Tory and Dead Councils might want to reflect that when their government chose to cut the funding for fire safety, the public knew that their safety, the safety of the public, was at risk. And when this is reported in the press, I hope, and certainly in the media generally, I do hope that it will be made plain in this chamber that the Conservatives are concerned with where one station has been located. They have not said much that I heard of about how utterly wrong their government is. To try to go to the
impact of Oscar. Um, and it's, it's been, you know, I, I would support the, the comments of the Labour members in, in that respect, absolutely. When George Osborne talks about financial deficit, he never seems to talk about the social deficit that all these policies uh, are creating. And this is a very, very clear example. Um, I would also say that, you know, protection of the Greenbelt is incredibly important, but that's something that's not really in your thoughts. We just need to bear that in mind. And based on the comments earlier, I think a bit more work needs to be done to really reassure members that there are, really are no alternatives uh, to an alternative location for the, for the, for the new project if, and I really hope it doesn't come to pass, and I do support uh, the, the motion, but if it comes to pass that a new location is required, I think we need a bit more reassurance that the really, all the other alternatives have been fully investigated. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, moving to the second list, can I move to Bruce Barry, please? You have <coughs> three minutes to second the vote. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, um, first of all, I'd like to say that I support everything that my colleague, Councillor Clayton, said. <coughs>
mean, I, I don't accept that these cuts have been going on for years and years. The cuts that we've been uh, hit with over the last five years are of a massively different magnitude than anything that we've experienced. And I also don't accept the, the argument Council Perry made that all policies need to be the same. You know, please, Labour have different priorities um, than, than your policies. However, however, uh, if I could just um, uh, address um, some of Council Blakely's comments. You know, if I could put the challenge down to him, you know, the Chancellor could draw on his uh, well of human kindness and rethink this cut, then we wouldn't need to talk about any alternative sites, green cuts or otherwise. And that is the key point tonight that we need to, to focus on. And Mr Mayor, I believe very strongly that, you know, this is about making a stand against a really, really damaging cut that will impact on public safety. Make no mistake about that. And I really worry that if we don't take the, make a stand on this, then it sends a message to government that these cuts are okay and we're okay with them. And that will just invite more cuts uh, to our services going forward. So it is time to make a stand. We need to get behind this motion. We need to make sure that we send a clear message to George Osborne. He's got an opportunity <coughs> on Wednesday in his budget to reverse these cuts. <coughs> don't get drawn up. Uh, don't get drawn on red herrings like other sites. We don't need to do that. We need to stop these cuts now and the, the two step fire stations can stay open and the public safety of the residents of Will uh, will, be, uh, will be guaranteed. So, Mr Mayor, with that, I move uh, uh, I support our resolution and ask Council to uh, reject the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <laughs>
Ďakujem. Po... Ja som musel spraviť. Ďakujem. 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 to the first uh, motion to be developed in the Northern Powerhouse. We've already 